Chapter 5 covers the supporting structures in detail. We'll talk about trend line breaks as well as double tops and bottoms, and also there are two ways to use gaps. Using the trend line to trade breakouts. Let's say price action rallies from A up to B and then drops down to C. Then as it works its way up to D, it doesn't go all the way up. Instead, point B is offering resistance. So instead, it drops down. Now this high can be right at the same level as this high or a little lower. And we'll call that little b. Price then tries to go up again. Again, it doesn't go all the way up. It experiences resistance from little b. And then it drops. And let's call that high point x. If that were to happen, the market has just formed a trend line. If you were to connect these highs, you would have a trend line. Now, ideally, this trend line should be horizontal, but instead, it is sloping down slightly. Now the key here is that we can play the breaking of that trend line. Now that trend line again should be shallow because little b should be exactly the same point or a little bit lower than capital B and x should be at the same high or a little bit lower than little b. So the breaking of that trend line should have very good follow through. But where exactly is that trend line break? Is it here? Is it here? Just whereabouts is it? Well, we're not going to worry about breaking that trend line in the real sense. All we're going to do is worry about breaking through the high that we call X. Because once we break that high of X, we will have broken above a pivot high. And once that happens, price action should break above little b within a few ticks and then eventually it should break above capital B because that's what we were trying to do in the beginning to break above capital B. So to get in on this market on the long side is when price action breaks above X. So the tactic is to place a buy stop order one tick above X when price is working its way up to point X. So you have a buy order there sitting there. In the event it goes up, you're in the market. And once your order is filled, place a protective sell stop one take below the previous low, which is right here. If you're unsure about orders, such as a stop order or a limit order or a market order, it's all written out in the manual. So really, the point of no return is point X. One tick above point X as it breaks through is the point of no return. But once we break above any pivot high, you can do sideways time range comparison. So we can call that T1 and we can call that T2. What would make this trend line break even better is when T2 is wider than T1. Once you form a wider time range as you break through above a pivot high or low, that would tell you that the follow through would be very, very good. So this would be a better trend line break. In other words, this one, once broken above point X, will have very, very good follow through. By the way, I call this the breaking of a three point trend line. A three point trend line is a better trend line break than a two-point trend line. This pattern also has other names. Sometimes it's called a triangle or a flag or a wedge. But the bottom line is that they are all breaking the trend line in the direction of the trend. Now since we're putting our protective sell stop one take below this pivot low, it should be higher than the previous pivot low. Also, that would give us a sense of higher pivot lows as we make a higher pivot high above X. 
However, this low can be lower than this low. But what is more important is that time range. The widening time range is what this whole thing is all about. Remember, originally, we were trying to break above B going here. But instead, all of these things happen. So B is still the focal point. That's still the point that is of major concern. So really, the real point of no return is breaking the high of B. Once that high gets broken, that's where it is the biggest time range. It should be the biggest when compared to a previous time range. So this little one here, right around A, let's call that T1. And of course, this one should be T2. This T2 should be much wider than T1 in a trend line break. So in the end, a trend line break is just a T1, T2 formation. And of course, because it has wallowed sideways for so long, eventually this T2 following B usually will be much wider than T1, and that's why this follow through happens. What if this trend line doesn't slope down or horizontal, but slopes up? Well, first of all, that's not really a trend line break anymore. It is simply breaking above a higher pivot high. And now it's just a series of time range comparisons. Here's the time range to be compared with this one, to be compared with this one, and that one. So this is not a trend line break to the upside anymore. Let's take a quick look at the bearish scenario. A goes down to B, goes up to C, doesn't go below capital B and forms a little b, tries to go below little b, but instead bounces up to form X and forms a trend line which gets broken one tick below X. Sell stop order one tick below X to get in short. Buy stop one tick above that high once the short order gets filled. And what makes this trend line break to the downside even more powerful is when you do sideways time range comparison. And if T2 was wider, that would make this trend line break to the downside even that much better. But when a trend line breaks, the real time range comparison is between this one and a previous one. And usually, this one will be much, much wider. What if, instead of bouncing up here, this actually broke through? If this were to break through, then that would be a two-point trend line break. And again, you would do sideways time range comparison here and to see which one would be wider. And of course, in the end, it's this versus that. A two-point trend line break is not quite as good as a three-point trend line break. And here, T2 really should be wider than T1 in this sideways time range comparison. And the move down here should be bar to bar all the way through. Actually, all trend line breaks should be accompanied by a bar to bar strong thrust coming off of the previous pivot, in this case, the previous pivot high down to the breakthrough point, whether it be point X or in this case, this point here, which is little b, if you have a two-point trend line break. This way of trading trend lines can actually be a standalone strategy, even though I put it here as a supporting structure. Let's take a look again at the gold daily chart, the one that we've seen before in the sideways time range comparison section. Now we can look at it as a trend line break trade. Remember, that low was 636.8.
and that low was 637 even. And if you were to connect these two lows, you would get a trend line that is sloping up just slightly. Now, you know that this initial time range is one, two, three bars. So as soon as you get beyond three, one, two, three, then if and when this bar were to break below this low here, we would have had a good two-point trend line break. But that one didn't break through. Instead, the following one broke through, so it gave us an even wider time range break right around here. So that was a five bar wide time range in comparison to three. But from a trader's perspective, you may not want to get in at the open because it did gap down. So when it eventually worked its way higher, that would have been a good idea to go short because you know that that high should not be taken out to the upside. And of course, it went all the way down thanks to that move because that move there, that time range there, of course, now can be compared to this one as we talked about earlier. And the move was a huge one down. So this is an example of a two point trend line break to the downside. Here's the E-mini Russell 10 minute chart. And let's see how trend line breaks can work if you day trade. Now I remember trading this myself personally. First, you have this huge up move here. It goes up bar to bar and that high there has managed to work its way higher than a previous pivot high. So you say, hmm, interesting. We can call that B. We can call that little b. And we can call that X. So there's your trend line to be broken to the upside. And the way we would get in is to focus in on one tick above X. Remember, X and little b are exactly at the same high. So technically, this trend line curves a little bit. But that's okay. We're looking at the high of X. And once it goes one tick above X, up it goes for two very important reasons. First, we can do sideways time range comparison between here and here. Two bars versus five bars. So the second time range is wider. You already know that this is two bars wide. So as we're forming these bars, there'll come a point where you know that, hey, if and when we were to break above from this point on forward, we would have formed a wider time range in comparison. So right after, let's say on this bar or that bar, you can place your buy stop order one tick above this bar's high to catch it on the way up. And of course, your protective stop would be down here. The second reason is that the retracement is shallow around this trend line break. In other words, from here to here was the initial thrust. It went up bar to bar. And it retraced shallow before going up. Let's check to see how shallow. Let's use Fibonacci retracement analysis. It comes in as a 38% retracement before the sideways formation was made. Now keep in mind that as retracements go, anything less than 38% isn't really fair game. It's just noise. So if it's a little bit less than 38%, that's fine. If it's a lot less than 38%, then that can be just noise. So this is the unfolding of a measured move. So after you get in, how long should you stay in? Where's point D? Let's figure it out using measure move extensions. A up to B, drag it down to C. We see that it has gone beyond the 78% and it barely missed the 100% measure move area. So it was a good idea to get out 
here. So this formation is an excellent one to go long when that trend line breaks above point X. And by the way, if you were to compare time ranges in a series between these two, it is also wider over there, 10 bars versus 9. Here we see the Euro daily chart. It's somewhat similar to what we just saw on the 10 minute chart of the E-mini Russell. We have a strong thrust up here. The retracement is somewhat shallow and we can name these highs the same way as we did before. But here's an interesting thing. There's a gap there. Now that was Martin Luther King's birthday in the middle of January. So Q charts did not show a bar. So conservatively you can say yeah there's a bar there and we'll call it three bars versus three bars and therefore it is a tie. And we can buy it one tick above here. But the interesting thing is this. This time range here is actually narrower than that time range there. So even though we had a breakout right here, be careful. Even a good trend line break will not have too much follow through. And let's check with measured move extensions. This one did not even hit the 78% measure move extension. So you need to get in and get out quickly. Yes, it is a three point trend line break, but because of time range comparison in a series, get out early. A double top or bottom is an important supporting structure, but it can also be the dominant structure. Let's say price action climbs from A up to B, and then drops down to C, and then it tries to rally up to D, but it meets resistance somewhere around B and drops. The moment it moves down here below this point here, we no longer have a measured move. This instead is a double top. There are the two tops and a pivot low in between. Now ideally these two highs, these two tops should be exactly at the same tick. But in reality, top number two may be a little bit higher than one. Or it may be a little bit lower than one. So long as this range is between 90% of this range and 110% of this range, it qualifies. Now this is not any hard and fast rule. It's just arbitrary. As mentioned earlier, confirmation happens right here. One tick below this pivot low is where the double top gets confirmed. Should we try to short it at confirmation point? Well, it all depends. We have to use sideways time range comparison and see if this time range is wider or narrower than this one. If this one was wider, then we can think about going short. But only if this double top formation is a trigger that is part of a bigger pattern that has a bearish setup to start with. A better way to use the double top is to look for buying opportunities at different Fibonacci levels as price action drops after confirmation. The reference range is from the pivot low to the higher of the two tops. And we're going to use single sided extensions, extending down. In this case, the reference range goes from the pivot low to the second top. And we're going to extend down from the second top. And here are the three extensions that are associated with double tops. Now the numbers here aren't important. First is the 161 percent single sided extension. Next is the 200 percent followed by the 261 percent single sided extension off of that 
referenced range. This is the most extreme, the 261. The 200 percent is the one in the middle and the 161 is the one right out of the gate. The most reliable of the three extensions is the 261.8. There's another one that is even beyond that one, 361.8 percent. And we'll talk about that later in examples. What if the second high is a little lower than the first? Then you can take the single-sided extension of this range, which is a legitimate range, or a true way is to go from this pivot low to the higher of the two highs, which is up there, and use that as a range to do single-sided extensions going down. So if the two highs are somewhat close to each other, then the difference wouldn't be that much. So now we'll be using this particular range here to do extensions. And there are the three extensions. Here is the 161 extension bounce. And here it bounces off of the 200% extension. And here you see price action bouncing off of the 261%. You'll see this scenario a lot more. This is a very reliable pattern, a very reliable extension level for double tops and bottoms. And this will be a very, very good supporting structure at the 261% extension using double tops and bottoms. Let's take a quick look at the double bottom. You have the two bottoms and the pivot high in between. These are the three components of a double bottom. The second bottom can be a little bit higher or lower than the first bottom. If it's lower, then we'll just use this as the reference range to project up. And here we're going to draw in the Fibonacci ratios. Here it reacts to the 161% extension. Here it reacts to the 200% extension. And here it drops after hitting the extreme 2.618 single-sided extension which is more common and more reliable because it is extreme. And if the second bottom is a little bit higher, we'll take the measurements off of the first bottom price-wise. And that will be the range in which we can extend up from. Let's take a look at some examples of double tops and bottoms. This is a July wheat, the weekly chart. Here you can see bottom number one and number two, and they're exactly at the same low tick, 351. And there's the high in the middle, and it's at 382. So here is the double bottom. Here you can see it moving up after the confirmation point. It went up pretty strong, bar to bar. Let's draw in the Fibonacci ratios. We'll go from this high to this low, which is exactly the same low as the other one. And here we see that we should be siding with the extreme calculation. And it hit it right on the nose. But we never want to use Fibonacci ratios just by itself. So let's take a look at this range right here. And we can extend that up also using, let's say, single-sided extension and see what happens. I'll click here, drag. Notice how these two Fibonacci numbers from two different areas came very close to each other. That's a good place to go short, especially when you have the extreme calculation off of one of them. In this case, the double bottom. It ends up dropping about 70 cents. Here you see a double top in the April crude oil daily chart. Here, top number two is slightly higher. I like this particular setup better than if top number one was slightly higher. The reason is that if we were to buy using a double top as it extends down to the extreme calculation, it helps that we have some sort of bullishness when 
top number two is a little bit higher than top number one. In other words, as we come off of this second top, it is coming off of a higher high, technically speaking. Now let's use Fibonacci calculations from the pivot low to the second high. Here we see price drops to the extreme calculation before a little bounce up. And it struggles its way up. Now that's partially due to the fact that these bars come down very strong bar to bar. And back here, there's no other formation like the wheat chart to help support this particular buy area. So it's all by itself. You have this pivot low here, but that in itself is not offering enough of a support. So yes, you do have a bounce here, but the move may be limited. Limited to maybe a 38% bounce. Let's check from top number two down to the low. Here's the September Euro daily chart. Here you see a double top again. As you watch these bars confirm and continue to go down, here you see a huge bar. Do not think about buying after a huge bar. Think about the following bar or the next bar. So let's do Fibonacci extensions. Because this bar is so long, think about the extreme 2.618 extension. So we'll focus on that as a possible buy off of this double top extreme calculation. Now this move is stronger than what we saw in the crude oil. Let's move back a little bit and see what came before this double top. Since this calculation is below this low, we need to pay attention to see just where that low is what is that low part of? And we see that it's part of a big measured move extension. As soon as it goes below this low, this measured move comes into focus. And we'll call this huge measured move an ABCD move. Let's use Fibonacci extensions. Here the two calculations are right on top of each other. Let me move one of them so you can see. Notice how the 2.618 is right on top of the 786 measure move extension. Let's go back further to see if there's anything else. This also looks a lot like a double top. Here the second top is slightly lower than the first. Now let's use Fibonacci extensions. We'll go from the pivot low to a high that is top number one, right about there. Notice how the 200% extension off of this bigger double top is close to the other two numbers. So right here at the average, so you can buy it at point D with a lot of confidence. The only thing that may limit this upward move somewhat to greater heights is the fact that if you were to use time range comparison and call that T1 and T2, T2 is wider. That doesn't mean point D is a bad buy. It's just that we cannot use this double top as the dominant one. We have to use the measured move, which extends down 0.786 as the dominant formation. The dominant formation always wraps itself around the wider time range. So this upward move still going to be good, but may have some sort of limited up move. The conservative way to take profit is right at the 38% area, which is right around there. Here we can see a double bottom in the September Cocoa daily chart, with the second bottom a little bit lower than the first. When it gets confirmed right about here, it follows with an outside bar giving you a semi-pivot low. Then it works its way higher. Now you can do time range comparison in a series. And you can see that the time range is getting narrower right about there, which is good if you're thinking about shorting. So let's do the extensions up from the pivot high down to the second low. And we can see that it has a reaction slightly below the 1.618 extension. It goes through the 200% extension with a lot of gusto 
and this bar right here hits the 261% extension with a lot of power with a gap and a pretty long bar now with that scenario do not think about shorting right there look to the following bar but the following bar also gaps up in this case abort the trade do not try to get in on this trade to the short side now remember there's also one more extension to the double bottom which is the extreme extreme 3.618 extension so let's take a look at that one for a second now that one is way up here that one is also reached with a bar to bar extreme move looking to the following bar this following bar shows just as much strength so in this case do not touch this do not go ahead and try to get in as these bars continue to go higher and as you can see they just keep on going higher so in this case the double bottom should not be traded should not be looked upon as a formation that can be shorted even at the extreme extension of 2.618 or the super extreme extension of 3.618 this is simply not a tradable double bottom here is the August live cattle daily chart. It also gives you a double bottom formation. With the second bottom being a little bit lower than the first. Let's put on the extensions from the high down to the second bottom. We can see that price action does not stop at the 161% area. It does not hit the 200% area instead it drops down to this low and then comes this huge bar this by the way is a limit up bar one of the few that we have seen in the last few years with that formation there it also works its way up close to the 2.618 area makes a little pivot low and then goes through it with that formation it is wise to not go and short at the 261 percent area because of the amount of strength following the huge limit up day so instead we can focus in on the extreme the very extreme 3.618 extension up there if we have another structure that would also unfold into that area let's take a look at this range right here this range can now be used to extend up single sided 2.618 as we draw in this single sided 2.618 extension we can see that it is close to the other calculation now we can think about taking the average of the two and see if there should be a drop in price around that neighborhood here we can also do some quick time range comparison this one is narrower than this one so you can think about possibly going short at the average of those two numbers up there now you can also see that this one forms a measured move as well so let's put on a measured move extension to see what extension number comes up the 1.27 measured move extension level is very close to the 2.618 single sided extension so you can actually short it here to summarize the dominant structure is the double bottom thanks to the wider time range right here next we're gonna skip the 2.618 extension off of the double bottom and focus on the 3.618 due to this huge limit up bar Number three, the supporting structure's single-sided 2.618 extension is close to the 3.618 extension of the double bottom. And that's this one right here. Here's that range that we were talking about. And it extends up 2.618 right there into the same neighborhood. And the measured move extends 1.27 into the same area. And that's this one right here that one extends 2.618 
into that same area. Let me move it so you can see. That's the 1.27 number right there. And that is based on this calculation right there. Okay? And finally, these bars are not showing extreme strong moves anymore. They're going sideways. So at the average, right around these three numbers, you can go short. So let's see how far it may drop. You should not expect this to drop too much because of the strength shown here, this retracement being shallow. So it is best to use the 382 area to take profits. So we'll go from the second bottom to the high and there's where you should be taking profits, right around there. A gap can be used as a supporting structure in one of two ways. First, it addresses the question, will an opening gap close? Secondly, a gap can also be used as a pivot. Here is the E-mini S&P chart, the 30-minute chart. And this is the first application of gaps. When a gap appears at the opening, observe the direction of the previous day's thrust into the close. Actually, the last hour or so of trading. In every market, the heaviest trading volume takes place in the first hour, hour and a half of trading and the last hour, hour and a half of trading of the day. So when a market shows a strong thrust into the close, it is very meaningful. It is telling you whether the next day's gap will have the tendency to close or not, assuming price action and time range comparisons are in good alignment also. The first application of gaps is very, very helpful when you are day trading because you're addressing what price action may happen at the open. But it's also very helpful when you're position trading. Let's focus in on the last three bars of Wednesday the 26th. From here down to here. Price action thrusts down into the close. The next day we have a gap opening. And once price action reaches a certain point, it moves down to close the gap. There is a downward bias thanks to this motion right here on the previous day. And eventually it trades all the way down. But the last two bars of trading here are up. And we have a gap up at the open. In this situation, we do not expect the gap to close. In other words, once you thrust up into the close and you gap up on top of that, that shows a lot of bullishness. So eventually the move is up for the rest of the day on Friday the 28th. Here's the Euro 30 minute chart. On the 16th, the last hour and a half, price rallies into the close. The next day, price gaps down and proceeds to rally as per the direction of the previous day's closing thrust. On this day, the up move is somewhat muted and price drops before rallying. On the 21st, we rally into the close. On the 22nd, price gaps down, but yet manages to rally. On the 22nd, price action drops into the close. On the 23rd, opening gap up, price drops to close the gap. Of course, this way of applying the gap theory needs to be in alignment with price and time analysis. 
Here is the 30 minute euro currency again in June. The last couple of hours show a strong rally into the close on the 28th. The next day on the 29th, it opens gap down and the gap closes as price action rallies. Now, towards the end of the day, there is a tremendous rally, the last hour and a half. Let's see what happens at the open. It opens gap up. In this situation, do not try to short it. Do not try to assume that this gap will close. It continues to rally the rest of the day. This is the March soybeans daily chart. Now let's look at the second application of gaps. The end of a gap can be used as the first pivot of a range. Here we see a gap right here. The gap ends right here. This low here can now be used as a first pivot. Here is the second and natural pivot. So here is a range that can be used. Let's draw single sided extensions. So we go from this low to this high. As you can see, price action bounces after hitting the 1.618 single sided extension. Now let's take a look at this gap right here. I'm going to blow this up just a little so we can see clearer. Here's that gap again. The gap ends here. Here is the natural pivot low. And here is the range that can be used. Let's use single sided Fibonacci extensions. I'll click here first, drag it down to this natural low. And here you see price action hitting and reacting at the 261.8 single sided extension level. Here is the September heating oil, the daily chart. And we see a gap here, starting here and ending there. And we can use this range to project downwards. Let's apply Fibonacci single sided extensions. Here, price drops to the super extreme 3.618 single-sided extension before stabilizing and bouncing up a little bit. Here is the E. Russell 30-minute chart, and we see a gap right here. So we'll use this range to project downwards. Let's apply Fibonacci. Click here and there. Here, price action reacts to the 1.27 single sided extension. Okay, you're here at last. Chapter six, superstructure. Here, a dominant structure turns into a superstructure as time and price align. And then there are 10 case studies to illustrate all the concepts. A superstructure shows you the predictable part of the market. That is the goal. First, you need price alignment. You focus on the retracements. A shallow retracement means a strong trend, and a deep retracement means a weak trend. And then you watch the extensions. They have the tendency to move towards the extremes. Then you need to focus in on time alignment. You compare time ranges in a series and you compare time ranges sideways. Now keep in mind that narrower means weakening trend and wider means trend gaining strength. Here are the steps to a superstructure trade setup. This is all in your course manual. Number one, think measured moves. Measured moves give you trend direction and strength. This is the foundation. 
Number two, watch for price trading past a pivot high or low. This is the making of a measured move. Number three, focus on the measured move with the widest time range. And also note the retracement at pivot C. The measured move with the widest time range is, of course, the dominant measured move. We want to focus on that. Number four says, look for back-to-back -back measure moves and measure move within a measure move forming from pivot C of the dominant measured move. These are supporting measured moves. Number two, three, and four all pertain to price structure, the measured move. Number five says, look for other supporting structures forming from pivot C of the dominant measured move. And we're talking double tops and bottoms or extensions using gaps, the second application of gaps. Number six, always compare time ranges. You want to know if the market is getting stronger or weaker. Number seven, check the length of the individual price bars, especially when these bars are going past a pivot high or a pivot low. This also tells you whether the market is getting stronger or weaker. So number six and seven are telling you to watch how the market is either gaining strength or losing strength from the perspective of time and price. Number eight, apply Fibonacci measured move extensions to the dominant measured move first and then to the supporting structures. Keep in mind that retracements and single-sided extensions are to be used as guides only, except for the extremes, the 2.618 and the 3.618 single-sided extensions. Number nine, take the average of the Fibonacci clusters. You should have at least three numbers. Here is where the numbers come together at a high probability turning point, which is the place to enter the trade. So number eight and number nine pertain to applying Fibonacci ratios. Number 10, trade with a strong trend. That is trade in the direction of the trend when the trend is strong. And this pertains to the improved strategy number one using Fibonacci applications or breakout trades such as trend line breaks. And number 11, you can trade either with the trend or against the trend when the trend is weak, when you see a lot of deep retracements. Here you can pick highs and or lows if any good setups show up. Finally, number 12 says, check the lower time interval charts. What you're doing is you're looking for additional supporting structures. So if you're looking at the main chart and it's a weekly chart, go down to the daily chart to see if there are additional alignments that you may find there, either in price or in time. And of course, if you're looking at the daily chart, go down to the 60 minute chart just to take a quick peek and so on. This helps because you're looking at what's happening currently in terms of all setups that are developing. 